The cruel truth. None of China's three chip, choke points, have escaped Japan's grasp. Dependence and breakout in the shadow chip war. January 7, 2026. China's Ministry of Commerce officially released announcement number three, explicitly reinforcing export controls on military related items to Japan. This specifically covered seven categories of core semiconductor material items, including photoresists and polishing fluids. Just one day after the announcement, Nikkei Asian Review, citing anonymous industry executives, revealed that Japan's supply of high-end photoresists to China had already seen a 15% quota reduction for three consecutive months. More critically, UV photoresists used for advanced process nodes of 7 nanometers and below showed signs of indirect suspension toward China's leading wafer foundries, with many orders marked as Delivery Deferred. You read that right? This game, which appears to be a mix of Chinese countermeasures and Japanese pressure, is heading toward an outcome that might completely overturn your understanding. The Chinese chip industry, repeatedly portrayed by Western media as being in a stranglehold, has not only failed to stall due to material supply cuts but has actually accelerated its localization process in key material fields by 30% against the trend. The delivery cycle for domestic mid-to-low-end photoresists and standard polishing fluids has even been shortened by nearly half. To understand the logic behind this reversal, one must first understand how critical photoresist is. It is like the super precision ink of chip manufacturing. Circuit patterns, thousands of times thinner than a human hair, rely entirely on it to be transferred onto the wafer through light exposure. How strict are the precision requirements? Impurities of even one part in a trillion can cause short circuits and scrap the chip. Advanced EUV photoresists must withstand high-intensity extreme ultraviolet light without decomposing. Without it, even the most expensive lithography machine is just a pile of scrap metal just as a high-end printer is useless without ink. What is even more mind-bending is that while the global semiconductor material market seems firmly monopolized by Japanese companies, it hides a fatal weakness. 90% of the core heavy rare earth materials, such as dysprosium and terbium, required for Japanese photoresist production, critical components for formula stability, rely on imports from China. China holds a massive 92% global market share in heavy rare earth mining, separation, and purification. This means Japan's material hegemony actually has a choke point of its own. Next, let's dig deep into this shadow war, covering the global checks and balances, historical comparisons of Western companies breaking monopolies, and the shared human proposition of global technological synergy and security. The monopolistic reality versus historical precedent. First, look at a set of shocking data. In the global semiconductor material market, worth over $60 billion, Japanese companies hold a commanding 52% share. More critically, in the 19 core materials that determine the success or failure of chip manufacturing, Japanese manufacturers hold the top global market share in 14 of them. Take photoresist, the lifeline of chip lithography, for example. Japanese domination in the high-end sector is suffocating. 90% of the global high-end photoresist market is firmly controlled by four Japanese companies, JSR, Tokyo Okakogio, TOK, Shinetsu Chemical, and Fujifilm. Specifically for EUV photoresists used in 7 nanometers and below processes, these Japanese firms are the only ones capable of stable mass production, holding a market share nearing 100%. This has formed a landscape where, without Japanese companies, there is no advanced lithography. Additionally, in the field of polishing fluids, CMP slurries, Fujifilm and JSR hold a combined share of over 60%. In electronic specialty gases, Japan Sanso Holdings is a top three global giant, covering the core supply of mainstream foundries worldwide. This data makes many Western observers certain that, China's chip industry can only passively compromise. However, a look at the history of the European and American semiconductor industries reveals that such high-level monopolies have never been unbreakable barriers. Take the United States as an example. The 1980s was the golden age of the Japanese semiconductor industry. At that time, 
Japan's share of the global chip market soared to over 50%, and it once held 80% of the global DRAM memory market, forcing U.S. semiconductor companies into collective losses. To break this deadlock, the U.S. pushed for the U.S.-Japan Semiconductor Agreement, using trade restrictions to force Japan to open its market and limit export prices. Simultaneously, the U.S. government and enterprises concentrated funds on technological breakthroughs, focusing on weaknesses in semiconductor materials and manufacturing equipment. They supported companies like Applied Materials and Dow Chemical to deeply cultivate photoresist supporting materials and polishing fluid technologies, eventually achieving a comprehensive overtake in high-end chip manufacturing within a decade. By 2022, the U.S. Chips and Science Act threw down a $52 billion special fund, heavily subsidizing local semiconductor material companies. Giants like Dow and DuPont received billions in subsidies with the core goal of breaking dependence on Asian materials, Japan and South Korea. The European Shift and Supply Chain Risks Looking at Europe, companies there understand that. A single supply chain equals handing your fate to others, and have long taken the initiative to cooperate with China. Global chemical giant BASF has partnered with local Chinese companies to develop high-end polishing fluids focusing on high-purity formulas required for the 14 nanometers process. Germany's Horaeus has joined forces with Chinese enterprises in the electronic specialty gas sector to jointly promote the verification of domestic lithography gases. The reason these European giants are actively reaching out is that they see the fatal risk of a single supply chain. Authoritative industry reports indicate that in 2025, global chip capacity losses due to single-source supply chains reached 12%, causing over $7 billion in direct economic losses, with European and American companies accounting for over 60% of that loss. A classic example is the European chip giant Infineon in 2024. Due to reliance on a specific Japanese manufacturer for high-end photoresist, Infineon was forced to shut down two advanced chip production lines for two weeks following a fire at the supplier's factory, resulting in a direct loss of over $300 million. It is precisely these painful lessons that have led top global chipmakers like Intel and TSMC to launch multi-source procurement strategies, no longer binding core material supplies to a single country or company. The Myth of Passive Dependence This comparison across the US, Europe, Japan, and China clearly punctures the Western misconception of China's passive dependence. This solidified cognitive model no longer fits the reality of deeply interwoven global supply chains. In fact, after decades of evolution, the global semiconductor chain has formed an interdependent ecosystem where you are in me, and I am in you. Japan controls core materials like high-end photoresists due to decades of accumulation, hard to replace in the short term. China possesses the world's largest chip consumer market and controls heavy rare earth mining and separation, critical for Japanese production, a dual advantage of market and resources that is equally unreplicable. The West holds technical barriers in design software and high-end lithography machines. Ideally, these three are not in opposition but form a complementary industrial loop. When trade restrictions become a tool for gaming the system, the damage is never one-sided. For China, restrictions temporarily slow advanced processes. But for the restricting nations, they lose the massive Chinese market and disrupt the supply chain balance, driving up their own costs. China's path, innovation, not just replacement. China's breakout path is not simple, autonomous replacement, but an innovative exploration of global supply chain models. Currently, the localization rate of materials like 8-inch silicon wafers and polishing fluids in China has exceeded 30%. Red Avenue New Materials has achieved mass production of KRF photoresist, and Nada Optoelectronics R photoresist has passed verification by SMIC. These breakthroughs are not the result of working behind closed doors but incorporate the fruits of global cooperation. Products from Kemper Microelectronics, Romda have entered the supply chain verification stages of TSMC and Samsung, proving that the quality of Chinese domestic materials has gained international recognition. Contrast this with past Western technological blockades. U.S. restrictions on supercomputing technology in the 90s only forced China to develop the Galaxy, 
series independently. Today, Europe's active cooperation with China in the new energy sector avoids repeating the passive mistakes of the semiconductor field. Data shows that in 2025, patent applications by Chinese semiconductor material companies grew by 45% year-on-year, with 60% of these patents involving international cooperative R&D. This stands in stark contrast to the technological isolation, painted by some Western media. This shadow war over chip materials ultimately points to a new proposition in global tech governance. How to maintain open collaboration in the supply chain while ensuring self-security? China's practice offers an answer. Parallel autonomous innovation and global cooperation. If you want to understand more about the hidden logic of the global semiconductor supply chain, follow us. We will bring you deep case analyses of cooperation between Western companies and China in future updates. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.